Awesome. It gives me ble uh, great pleasure to know that you didn't move a muscle, even though you took a break for five minutes. You're still here. Thank you. It's Uganda's Independence. We're in that celebratory mood. And I have a special guest for you. But then I'll just give you a preamble. A preamble. How did we get here? Now, Britain granted independence to Uganda in 1962. But first, elections were held on March 1st, 1961. Benedicto Chuanuk of the Democratic Party became the first chief minister. Uganda became a republic the following year, maintaining its Commonwealth membership. In the succeeding years, supporters of a centralized state vied with those in favor of a loose federation and a strong role for tribally based local kingdoms. Political maneuvering climaxed in February 1966, where Milton Obote, the prime minister, suspended the constitution and assumed all government powers, removing the positions of president and vice president. Get a lot of this. In September 1967, a new constitution proclaimed Uganda a republic, gave the president even greater powers and abolished the traditional kingdoms. Later on, Uganda entered the turmoil of the Idi Amin years, President Yuri Museveni's NRM Liberation War, Alice Laquera's Holy Spirit Movement, and Joseph Kony's LRA Rebels. As this turmoil subsided, Ugandan politics moved from the war theater to hotel boardrooms and to the streets. So how far have we come? Joining us to discuss Uganda's political journey is Honorable Ibrahim Samuju Nganda, the Kira Municipality MP, a former journalist and the spokesperson of the Opposition Forum for Democratic Change Party, FDC, and he joins me right now in studio. A very good morning. Thank you for coming. Welcome. Thank you. Mr. Samuju, 57 years of self-rule. Are we as independent as we ought to be? Um, <coughs> the... Main agitators for our independence, mainly there are people who had been schooled either at Makero, at the East African University, before they went to Britain, um, the Abu Mayanjas, the Mosazi in Kenya, and I think Jomo Kenyatta, the Kaundas, the rest of the world. They wanted to have democracy the way they saw it in Britain. In fact, some of the meetings agitating for independence took place in Britain. Although they wanted to overthrow the British colonial administration, mm -hmm. they were holding meetings in London. I, I remember reading about Musa's meeting in Jomo Kenyatta and participating in the Momo uh, rebellion in Kenya, mm -hmm. eventually coming here and begin organizing, leading to the formation of the first political party, the Uganda National Congress with the Mayanja and, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So the idea was that you will have democracy, you will have citizens who will have a say in the affairs of their country. The economic wars, the, the, those who were growing cotton wanted to gin their own cotton. So all these protests that happened um, 10 years, 20 years to independence were protests of self-emancipation mm. for citizens to have a say in the way they are governed, in the way their resources are distributed, mm. which I think has not happened. Even when you have a parliament, because they will tell you now I have a parliament, because at that time, you remember the protests in Uganda, mm -hmm. people wanted to be represented in the Uganda Rukiko. Mm -hmm. So the, what eventually happened was the transfer of the state power from the British colonial administrators, the governors, Cohen and others, mm -hmm. uh, who were sitting in Entebbe, into the hands of a few smart Ugandans mm -hmm. who continued doing the same things that... Uh, Cohen, uh, Micho, and others did. Mm -hmm. So that's what has happened. And that's why today the celebration in Soronko is not a celebration of Ugandans. It's a celebration of the ruling class. Let me get this straight, Mr. Nanda. So yes. it was just transfer of power from white hands to black hands. Yeah, just the transfer. Nothing yes. changed. Nothing changed. Explain. I, I was reading about, uh, and, and I helped uh, the later Mayanja, although he didn't finish, I was helping him to author his uh, biography. Mm -hmm. So I was reading about him later. Even as 1954, uh, leading to 62, mm -hmm. Mayanja and Musazi, Obwangola, and all the group that formed the f first political party in Uganda were freely moving from one district of Uganda to another, holding political parties, recruiting people into a political party. Mm -hmm. Today, I need a permit to organize even a small boardroom meeting I announced on man on behalf of the FDC that today we will have a public lecture to commemorate Uganda's independence. Mm -hmm. 
Police said, no, you can't have it. Maybe in a boardroom. So there was even a debate whether the FDC leadership and membership can congregate at Najanankumi to have a public lecture about Uganda's independence. So even 57, 60 years ago, the things that happened can't happen today. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw uh, my brother Chagulani, his show can't take place. Mm -hmm. And police says, we, we've not provided for traffic, we've not provided. So the few elite the, the actors mm -hmm. got the power from Andrew Cohen, from the British rulers, and to themselves, mm -hmm. and they are holding on to it uh, almost with the use of a, of a gun. Mm -hmm. So th that has happened effectively. So you no longer complain that you have the British administrators in Entebbe, mm -hmm. you have Ugandans who are in Entebbe, but as a citizen, you continue bowing before those people the same way our grandparents were bowing before the colonial administrators. Mr. Nganda, some Ugandan right now watching might disagree with you, saying there has been some change. Imagine before President Museveni came around, there were no non, political parties were non-existent. And he ushered in multi-party politics. Don't you think something has been done in no, that no, regard the, the, to the, ensure political inclusiveness? You see, first of all, the, um, I remember reading a book by Ochamoge, um, the, the Why Nations Fail. And that book was centered on the voice of the citizens. Because he was giving examples, uh, looking at all what the authors have said about Africa, the, your geography, your culture, your this and that is what is uh, stopping you from developing. And then I think he looked at uh, Arizona in America and Arizona in Mexico. And his conclusion was that the reason people in Arizona and America are rich mm -hmm. is because they have a say in their administration. Mm -hmm. The reason just across the border, same people, same culture, same faith, same background, same everything, mm -hmm. are underdeveloped, it's because they don't have a say. They are at the mercy of the rulers. We are at the mercy of the rulers. So the citizens, yes, you no longer have a, a, a governor making pro pronouncements. You have a Ugandan doing the same thing mm -hmm. that Cohen was doing. But even in terms of the welfare, because what the, the British did, Despite everything else um, that didn't go well, they laid a foundation. It doesn't matter how many years it took them. The health foundation, the schools they built, so the, 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 the welfare. Today I was looking at the statistics as provided by the Uganda Bureau of Statistics. Mm -hmm. We still have 52% of Ugandans using Tadowa, the local paraffin candle, mm -hmm. as their main source of lighting, 57 years later. Mm -hmm you still have 71% of the population using firewood mm -hmm. for cooking, 71%. You still have, if you looked at the, the young people, the age between 24 to 27, 70% mm -hmm. of them are not working. So if you ask someone in the village uh, whether there's a difference, my father was around when independence was taking place, he's about 90 years old. I don't think he has any difference between Cohen and M7 and anyone else who holds state power. His welfare hasn't changed. At least the colonial is built for you, Morago, and handed mm -hmm. it over to you in 1961. Mm -hmm. Even to innovate today to put a coat of pain, you have to borrow 100 million US dollars from the colonialist. And now you say citizens must pay. They used to go to Morago, they are treated, they are fed, and then they return home healthy. Today, if you don't have money, even for simple ailments, you will stay and rot in public facilities. So, therefore, in, in terms of state power, the power has remained at the center. We don't have a say. We continue fighting for it. All these slogans you hear, people power, people's government, mm -hmm. the citizens are still fighting to uh, rescue the state from the state actors. Mm -hmm. That hasn't happened successfully. I think in a few African countries it has. I think in Ghana it has. You've had change of uh, administration, of, I, th I think, about four mm -hmm. times. In Tanzania, they are not yet there because you still have one party changing hands from one pair of hands to another. In Kenya, more or less, you've moved from one party to another. In Uganda, 57 years of independence, mm -hmm. 35 years of those 57 years are still in the hands of one person, and the hope that he will one day hand over peacefully is not there anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's where we are as a country, but we shouldn't lose hope. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't lose hope. We must continue agitating the same way um, our grandparents agitated for independence. One day, the moment you... you because self-determination that people used to uh, uh, 
to seeing that, which was a slogan eventually coming to uh, independence now, meant that citizens would have a say, would determine who gets into state house and then will chase that person, the moment is not delivering. Today, it is citizens who are being chased around. You have a rally, you are tear gassed by hundreds of policemen. Mm -hmm. So you go and bow before them, sir, can I have a rally? So that's where we are as a country. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Anganda, 57 years of Uganda self-rule, 33 of those, 33, 34, 35, Uganda has been at the, uh, NRM has been at the helm of Uganda's presidency in Uganda. They've achieved some milestones. They introduced UPE, USE. They introduced uh, a host of other things. Um, health center threes, health center twos, health center ones. They've been able to combat Ebola. They've been able to also maintain security in the country. Konya is non-existent. So, as a you member of the opposition, yes. are you one of those people who believe NRM has completely done nothing, um, even despite some of these <clears throat> small, small First activities? First of all, I, I am one of those Ugandans who think that every president has done something. Mm -hmm. It may not commensurate to the resources available to that president, it may not commensurate to the time he has been in power, mm -hmm. but every president has made a contribution. Mm -hmm. That contribution is now what you evaluate. Um, if you have so much resources, if you have uh, so much time in power, mm -hmm. does the power and the time you've been uh, at the helm of the state commensurate to the achievements? Um, I think Anam seven thirty three years uh, of his administration, mm -hmm. the time he has had, the resources he has had, uh, you can give maybe about 15%. Um, because you see, I, I keep giving Uganda the example of Dubai. 1972, Dubai had a shortage of food. We contributed food mm -hmm. under Idi Amin. Mm -hmm. Today, you have hundreds of thousands of Ugandans running into Dubai. The emir of Qatar who recently handed over to his son took over Qatar when it was almost a, a two-street trading center. Today, you have a head of state visiting Qatar to go and beg. There has been some achievements by the NRM, mm -hmm. but the achievement does not commensurate to the time and resources Mr. M7 has had. But also in terms of, of welfare, the president himself, when he was addressing parliament here, just next to you at Serena, mm -hmm. he himself said you have 69% of Ugandans, in his own words, mm -hmm. who he said, are bystanders in the economy. The young people that you see every day on the street who are not working, who feel, I remember a friend of mine told me, there is more traffic to betting clubs mm -hmm. than to the banks. And that tells you the story of the country. So the young people who should be building and should be working are not working. Mm -hmm. So the economy is not able to create jobs for everybody. It, it continues. But even those who are working, I represent a constituency where mm -hmm. I have a, a few f factories. Mm -hmm. But people who work in those factories, be it Azam, be it Roofings, be it everybody, they are like uh, slaves within their own countries. No contract. No appointment later, mm -hmm. you just report them. They give them numbers like animals. Mm -hmm. Because the moment they put you on a contract, you will demand NSSF, the government will demand for pay. But in their hundreds, they go because they don't have jobs. Mm -hmm. Today, the last time we were discussing about a, a labor export in parliament, the minister, Janet Mukwaya, told the parliament, when there was a ban on exportation of labor, mm -hmm. 40,000 girls arrived in Oman when there was a ban mm -hmm. in one year 40,000 just it imagine created more demand just imagine if there was no ban so you have a country that is letting out um, and, and you see the figures are, are very easy to get the, the last mm -hmm. time i was interacting with the nssf they told me on the nssf list they have about two million ugandans who have registered because they keep the registers mm -hmm. those who are active are nearly half a million mm -hmm. so People who are in formal employment in Uganda are about 2 million, including the half a million employed by government. Mm -hmm. But the total workforce is 15 million. Mm -hmm. So you have, a, I mean, you have a total workforce of 15 million, but you are able to employ just about 1.2, going by the figures by NSSF and government. So that's why we are. So there has been achievement, but very minimal, mm -hmm. considering the amount of resources that we have invested mm -hmm. in agriculture, in, in, in health, mm -hmm. in education. Mm -hmm. So the elite who are controlling the state mm -hmm. have been the prime beneficiary of all the investments we have made. And mm -hmm. that's why uh, um, if, if you came at Parliament, if you w w went and checked the ministries, mm -hmm. in their parking yards, you see the latest mode of land cruisers. 
So the ones who are supposed to be serving citizens are the kings. The citizens they are serving can't find even an ambulance. The other day we did the statistics on ambulances. Uganda had just about 400 ambulances and the public ones were 160. The rest are being donated by MPs, by private people. So that's where we are. Um, the achievements registered do not commensurate to the time and the resources invested. So our politicians are very self-centered. Because they are, I, I, yeah. I remember when uh, there was that contentious debate on age limit, you yeah. remember? Yeah. Um, as there were debates, uh, pull and push from opposition and then the ruling NRM, d they were disagreeing visibly on age limit. But then there's one thing they agreed on, mm -hmm. salary increments for the MPs. You locked yourselves <laughs> no, in no, parliament it's not, it's not the and then negotiated yeah. an increase for your salaries. Why is it that MPs tend to agree when it comes to money, politicians, yeah. but when it comes to contentious issues affecting other people, they, they are it, mute it, suddenly? It, it is not actually politicians. Human beings by nature are selfish. It is the rules that will put them in order. Remember when we were starting Observer 2004, mm -hmm. all of us directors, we were just walking to the cashier and picking money. We were collapsing within one month until when we had a meeting and said, you see, human beings by nature are supposed to be ruled by, by rules. The moment you don't put rules in place, you are in trouble. The reason people keep talking about parliament, let me tell you, even if you change the whole of parliament, this parliament, I used to be a parliamentary reporter. Mm -hmm. At every election, parliament changes by more than 70%, but the behaviors are going to be the same. Mm -hmm. Even me, I don't want to come here and pretend that for me, I, I am self I am this and that. So human nature must be overcome by a set of rules. The mm -hmm. moment there are no rules there, mm -hmm. human beings are like animals. So, in so before the, you blame mm -hmm. the MPs, yes. where things have changed, I went to Ethiopia some time back, an MP was earning 300 US dollar per month. That was the salary of an MP. Mm -hmm. I was in Rwanda, it's, it's a bit improved. But the trouble starts with the chief executive. President Yoram Seveni has lost the moral authority and, 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 and the power to curtail parliament. Because all the things he's doing are through parliament. Mm -hmm. So the MPs can afford to increase their salary. They can afford to buy themselves vehicles. I remember mm -hmm. when I moved the motion in parliament that instead of buying MPs vehicles, instead of giving them money, we should extend a loan. Mm -hmm. The MP said, I am a populist. I am uh, looking for publicity. Yet in Rwanda, they moved from provision of vehicles to what they call the zero free mm -hmm. by all government officials. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it will take the next chief executive to do the harder things that the, the current president can't do. Mm -hmm. The environment now provides for MPs to do what they want, the district administrators, because you have a president who is permanently looking for the next vote. Mm -hmm. The moment you get one who thinks uh, in five years I'll be done or ten years, mm -hmm. when the Kenyan MPs, because they are the highest paid on the continent, um, we are proposing retirement packages uh, obscene. Wurtnera said, no, over my dead body, I am not going to sign this, this bill, and he didn't. In Uganda, you can blame the MPs, but there's someone who is uh, uh, cheering them as they do these things, mm -hmm. because he's going to ask them to do uh, one possible thing I was talking about, the age limit. Not only the MPs, because you're speaking about the allowances, but NRM MPs were being lined up in Kororo and in Iwewaja to receive mm -hmm. 200 million shilling each for removing the age limit from the constitution. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are. We must accept there are no saints. You can't say that the, the moment this group in parliament mm -hmm. goes away and another one comes in, things are going to change. Mm -hmm. it, it will change the moment you have a chief executive who will say enough is enough. This is going to be the stop. So what we need is a, a concrete set of rules which are actually non-existent. And we cannot talk about independ Uganda's independence without hinting on that situation that happened two years ago when the Special Forces Command invaded Parliament, evicting uh, some of those opposition it MPs was not who, an eviction. We were, who are debating. I, I, was, I was the first to be grabbed. <laughs> and I ended up that in age limit. Yes. Now, do you think, how, how, how is the executive influencing Parliament? Uh, is that influencing capacity? That, 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 the debate, that debate, I remember the Honorable Major General Mugisha Muntuan on a Peter Ekomoro, uh, founder of the Crusader, who is to be presidential press secretary. They had a debate in the sixth parliament, either sevens or six. And the debate was you can't have ministers who are also MPs. Mm. Because the cabinet today is about 80 something, and all of them are MPs. On the day they have a matter. Uh, for which parliament is going to take a vote, you will have all the ministers coming. I remember um, there was a debate on a referendum law some time back. There was even a ban for ministers to travel. Mm -hmm. So near a court of parliament is cabinet. Mm -hmm. 
They are the ones who sit in the executive and then bring a, a proposal to, to parliament and then come and participate in debating them and in passing them. So in a nutshell, Mr. Ngana, are you telling me parliament of Uganda is a puppet to the executive? Certainly it is. I sit in that parliament. The moment you say that, everybody is going to be up in arms with you. But there is no matter for which, the, especially the president has said, this is how I want it to go and it doesn't. I remember one of the debates, uh, we had two of them mm -hmm. in the last parliament that were defined the character of the last parliament, was on oil. Mm -hmm. And then the second one was on um, increasing the salaries of health workers. Mm -hmm. He even had to drive NRM MPs to Shankwans. Mm -hmm. They came and changed because we had proposed in the budget a reallocation of 44 billion shilling to raise the salary increment of health workers. Mm -hmm. MPs who were swearing that they will not bow to the pressure of the president. After Chiang they all came saluting. We saw that. Mm. When we had a, uh, the oil, we had a contentious clause in one of the oil laws. Mm -hmm. The idea of parliament was that contract must be negotiated by technical people in the Uganda oil company. Mm -hmm. The president, no, 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 the minister will be the one to negotiate contracts. Eventually, he called a meeting. He said the search quo was the one prime mover of that proposal. Mm -hmm. He said, MPs for such cool put up your hands. They all did. So the executive has been usurping the powers of parliament for the longest time. It has time. overrun. When, when, when we, you, you, you mentioned the, the, the age limit, when we said no to the age limit, you know what happened mm -hmm. to us. Indeed. So if, even when you refuse, the mm -hmm. pressure, the, the violence. So parliament is not an independent institution that is able to call the executive to order. Okay, as we wrap up, let's talk about the spectator, the voter who has been watching these uh, issues unfold on the sidelines. As a member of parliament, you interact with a vast number of uh, constituents. Do you think the understanding of politics has increased as we wrap up? Um, the level of civic awareness has gone up a bit in many countries, in Aban and Peraban. In the rural areas, you still have Ugandans who traditionally think the government is the power, so therefore you must vote to the power. Um, and that's why most of our efforts you see these days are efforts surrounding um, the, the power and the people, mm -hmm. uh, people power, people's government, people everything. Mm -hmm. We think the citizens will learn that uh, um, with their effort they can make things different. Mm -hmm. uh, this country will be better. But mm -hmm. at the moment, I think we still have majority um, who will choose an MP, not because they think he will make a contribution mm -hmm. in parliament, but because he's the one who attends the funeral, mm -hmm. because he's the one who uh, um, raises money when there are mm -hmm. weddings. Mm -hmm. I think the majority of the population haven't realized that they need a set of human resource mm -hmm. at, at, at the helm of the state that will be able to change their lives. In this, I understood, Mr. Nganda, now, as we wrap up, how do you see the future of Uganda? Where are we headed as we wrap up? Um, I, I, I am always hopeful. Um, I only pray that the next set of leaders will be leaders who have come to serve. We keep saying that internally within ourselves, that if... Our effort is to get M7 out of power and then go and do the things that M7 is doing. Mm -hmm. We are worse than M7. Let's go just join the man and then we, we partake of the state resources. So let everybody in his mind know that the moment you're going to get into state power, please go there and get there to make Uganda better and to improve the welfare of the citizens. Not to make to serve yourself like it was in South Sudan. I remember I was there when they were getting their independence. The word government of South Sudan, which was abbreviated as GOS. Mm -hmm. the, the citizen said, no, it was government of set of service. Mm -hmm. Samu so, Junganda, the Kira Municipality MP, thank you for making the time to speak to NTV. Welcome, thank you for having <laughs> me. While you're still watching Morning at NTV, we now take a very, very short break. More exhilarating information is just right around the corner. Don't go anywhere.